All right, this is Rob Gunter from uh, CHP Dosimetry coming to you from here in beautiful East Tennessee. It's a wonderful spring day and thought we'd take this outside so everybody could enjoy it. And what we're going to talk about today is uh, radiation badges, using them, why you should use a radiation badge, if you should use a radiation badge, um, and how to use your radiation badges properly. Uh, there are several kinds of radiation badges that we have. We have a, a whole body badge, which is looks like this thing right here. And you clip it to your person. You can put it on your shirt lapel. You can put it on your collar. You can put it pretty much anywhere on your body. Interestingly, uh, the signal that this badge records, actually 10% of the response comes bounces out of your body into the badge. So it's important that the badge be worn somewhere on your torso so you get that bounce back into the badge that, like I said, gives you 10% of the signal. It's why we don't wear them typically on a sleeve or something like that, someplace away from the whole body because your arm, although you can wear badges and, and dosimeters on your arms, uh, typically a whole body badge like this one is worn on the torso. If you did wear one on your arm, it would be classified a little bit differently. And we have wrist badges, we also have ring badges, two different kinds of ring badges. And um, so that's pretty much how we wear them. Generally what you want to do with your radiation badge is always point it towards the source of exposure. So if you're working on a, a patient and uh, you have an x-ray beam coming down, You'd wear your whole body badge pointing towards the source of the radiation, which would be here. And uh, your rings, if you're manipulating a patient or an animal, if you're a veterinarian or something like that, you want the rings, the sensitive part of the ring, pointing up towards the radiation beam. Uh, if you're working with a piece of radioactive material, I have a little button source here, you would turn your ring if you were holding it or manipulating with your hand somehow, you would turn the ring actually towards the source. So you always want your badge pointed towards the source. If you were a, a person who was um, uh, an anesthesiologist or something like that, and, and there's a person on the table that you're working with and your back's turned to them, ideally you would put the badge on your back. So wherever the source of the radiation is, that's where you want the badge pointing. Uh, another thing that's important to know about the radiation badges is especially the collar badges or the whole body badges. If you're wearing any kind of protective shielding, anything like this, the badge is always on the outside. Because what you're, what you're monitoring with this badge is your whole body. And your whole body is defined in the regulations as essentially your torso, from your elbows to your knees, your chest, your head is part of the whole body. So if you're wearing a shielding apron, generally your head is exposed, as is the top parts of your arms. And typically what we do with these radiation badges is we, uh, we try and be, take a conservative measurement. So we're always uh, attempting to essentially record the highest dose possible even when that dose may not be representative of what a person gets. For example, if you're wearing a shielding apron, uh, most of your body is shielded, but we're going to put this badge on the outside because what we always try to do is overestimate your dose. Now, if uh, overestimating your dose causes regulatory concerns or something like that, there are other things that we can do. We can, we can do uh, collar badges where we have multiple badges. We can put one on the collar outside of an apron one underneath of an apron and we can do an average of the two. It, it provides a little bit more realistic measurement of your radiation dose. That's what we do. Okay.